The carrier Nimitz is anchored in the usual place, about a mile off the Naples coast. But the churning seas have made the short boat ride to shore treacherous at best, impossible at worst. When the swells were getting the best of the tiny boats, Navy officials called a halt to boating trips between ship and shore. That left 1,600 sailors stranded, some for as many as four days. In a city most sailors don't like anyway, at a time of year when they'd prefer to be home, spirits were particularly low. Staying in a hotel now, and uh, hopefully I'll just get drunk and forget about Christmas. It's not too great. I wish I was home. Uh, you know, I just called home, and they, they said everything's nice and snowy, and you know, everybody's having fun. Most of the stranded sailors wound up at the USO, where the staff is in the business of making servicemen feel at home. Well, I've been here stranded on the ship, on shore here for about four days now. And I got to talk to my mom and dad and girlfriend. They put me up here when I couldn't get a motel room. With so many sailors stranded, the USO's direct dial telephones got a workout Christmas Eve. Just because there aren't a lot of sailors in line, don't think there aren't plenty waiting to make their phone call home. In fact, this list contains the names of just a few of them. But if these sailors had a rough time being stuck in port, it was worse for those who thought this Christmas would be spent together regardless. We just received a request from Nimitz to pass a message to his wife, Mrs. Duncan, at Delta Hotel in Rome. Message reads, Paul, unable to get ashore due to weather conditions, will call as soon as possible. Despite the missed connections, sleepless nights, and foul weather, it was, after all, Christmas Eve, a time for Christians to rejoice. It was a time to remember families, especially that of General James Dozier, the NATO official who was kidnapped in this country last week. It was also a time for Catholics to pray for a nation in trouble. When we speak of the people of Poland, that they may know the joy as we know this evening. And let us pray for our families here and wherever they may be. Church services like this one helped give a sense of normalcy to a Christmas that, for the sailors of the Nimitz and the Kuntz, has been anything but normal. In fact, many who've been here before say this has been the worst Christmas yet. In Naples, Italy, Kathy Mitkiff, The Daily News. Uh, it's not too great. I wish I was home. Uh, you know, I just called home and they, they say everything's nice and snowy and you know, everybody's having fun. I'm staying in a hotel now, and uh, hopefully I'll just get drunk and forget about Christmas. But the USO tried to make Christmas a less dismal prospect. It stayed open through the night to give sailors a place to sleep. It organized song fests. It gave sailors access to direct dial telephones. Hi, Mom. How you doing? Merry Christmas. Just because there aren't plenty of sailors waiting in line to make a phone call, don't think that there aren't plenty waiting for their turn at the telephone. This list is full of the names of hundreds of sailors who are waiting for their turns to call home. It was an exercise in frustration. The ship only a mile offshore, and except for emergency trips, no way to get to it. It was especially bad for those whose wives and girlfriends made the expensive 15-hour flight to Italy to spend the holidays with their loved ones. So when USO Director Clark Cook made radio contact with the Nimitz, it was almost always to relay bad news. Paul, unable to get ashore due to weather conditions, will call as soon as possible. Despite the missed connections, sleepless nights, and foul weather, it was, after all, Christmas Eve, a time for Christians to rejoice. The clerics asked the congregation to pray for General James Dozier, who was kidnapped last week by the Red Brigade in the northern part of this country. Catholic thoughts at this midnight mass were with a troubled nation as well. When we speak of the people of Poland, that they may know the joy as we know this evening. And let us pray for our families here and wherever they may be. Any Christmas is difficult for those who are away from their families, but for those who were stranded ashore in a town they don't particularly like anyway, it was a Christmas that was anything but merry. In Naples, Italy, Kathy Mitkiff, The Daily News. 
The USS Kuntz tied up December 20th in Naples Bay in the shadow of snow-capped Mount Vesuvius. It had been a rough night at sea, so while it was liberty for some, others had to stay behind to repair the damage. Naples gets a lot of visits from sailors, but it is not a favorite port. Basically, Naples is a big sailor's town, and that's it. There's, uh, you can go out and act like a sailor on the beach, basically, and the people treat you the same way. While Kuntz crewmen headed into town, the aircraft carrier Nimitz dropped anchor in the usual spot about a mile away from the pier. After a short boat ride into town, crew members were instantly bombarded by a pack of Italian vendors. What they lacked in quality merchandise, they made up for in persuasion. The next stop for an incoming sailor is the Naples USO, where a sailor can find just about anything to remind him of home. The USO serves inexpensive home-cooked meals American style and dishes up advice on what to see in a town sailors say is only after their money. In fact, around the corner from the USO, you'll find a whole host of American-inspired bars. They do a phenomenal business when the ships are in port, but there are limitations. The Navy has declared the area on the other side of this building off-limits to sailors. It's called the gut of Naples. By night, it's a haven for prostitutes and drug dealers. By day, it's just another Italian ghetto. But despite the warning, the shore patrol picks up sailors who venture there anyway at their own risk. There are a lot of little areas in the guts that um, they're dangerous. You can get knifed, you can get killed up there. And this area is not exactly uh, pro-democracy and all that sort of thing. As the bars got more crowded, the wind and the rain brought boating to a standstill, and 1,600 sailors were stranded in Naples. It means we've got to do a lot of hand-holding for the people who are stranded in town. The USO normally stays open all night when, the, when this happens to give the people a place to sleep. As you can see, there are no beds. But they, uh, they sit up in the chairs, sleep on the pool tables or whatever. Uh, we have some problems with tours, of course. That's a big uh, problem. If a tour is leaving, the people cannot get in. Obviously, they can't go on the tour, unfortunately. When there are no beds at the USO, sailors are forced to spend an expensive night at a local hotel. When it rains at night, Italians up their prices on their hotel rooms like 20 bucks a person and three persons to a bed or something like that. It isn't that great. Even the next day, the high winds whipped the water and Mount Vesuvius was enshrouded in fog. It did not make for a Merry Christmas, but sailors who've been here before say it's all part of the Neapolitan bargain. In Naples, Italy, Kathy Mitkiff, The Daily News. <laughs> the children's voices rise above the walls of the ancient convent that is their home. Some of their parents are dead. Others have simply abandoned their sons and daughters. Adult economic realities are forcing these children to lead lives almost as Spartan as the nuns who lived here before them. The heat is only turned on for two hours a day. The toys atop the closet were shared by the 110 children who lived here until the buses arrived. Crew members of the Nimitz had heard of the orphanage from the USO. On their last port call, they built benches for the school in the cafeteria. House of Tough. Now they came bearing gifts and food and love for children who've been shortchanged on each count. Once inside, the children who only eat meat twice a week were treated to an American Christmas meal with turkey and ham. The hearty Buon Natale, the Italian way of saying Merry Christmas, a Nimitz cook hid behind a white beard to give gifts to kids who didn't even have a Christmas tree last year. It's been a great time. Uh, I guess the basic thing about it is that it's been so home-like, it really has been. And to, for me, I think I've had a, a much better Christmas than they have just by being here. It was great. I love kids and I love being around them. And that's, you know, I, that's... It really, I think I got more of a blessing out of it than they did. The Nimitz crewmen raised $2,500 in just a few weeks. And in addition to the dinner and the gifts, they're buying the orphanage a much-needed refrigerator and returning here on future cruises to make repairs. They had a lot of workshops going on, things done for building tables for inside the cafeteria. And uh, they're in the process of getting some furniture and some refrigerators and stuff like that for the people out here. And it's a great thing. God bless them all. Two of these children were adopted by Americans last year after the earthquake that devastated outlying areas of the city. Project coordinator Anna Welcome, an Italian USO volunteer, 
says many of the other children are also ready to come to America. So now these two boys, they're in the States, and they're very happy because, uh, you know, sometimes they write the, the director here, and they tell me about, you know, they're happy, they find beautiful parents, you know, the family's nice, uh, you know, they're really, really happy. But even if they never reach America, these children got a taste of what an American Christmas is about. And the sailors of the Nimitz got a special gift as well. It makes me happy. It feels like, it makes me feel like I have a family here. In Naples, Italy, Kathy Mitkiff, The Daily News.